Hi friends, I Robinson. Welcome to our YouTube channel Star Science Robinson. Let's get into topic rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease. Today we are going to deal with about rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease. First, we'll see about rheumatic fever and how this rheumatic fever and heart disease uh, will get affected. First, we'll see in a diagram where we'll go with rheumatic fever is a type of acquired heart disease. It is inflammatory lesion in heart, blood vessels, joints and connecting tissues and we'll see in a diagram as I draw here where pharynx initiate or reactive rheumatic fever. So we'll see in diagram where it lodges and uh, here I'm showing you in diagram where it will have a group A beta hemolytic streptococcal pharyngitis and uh, the only streptococcal infection of the pharynx and which initiate or reactive rheumatic fever and this streptococcal infection of upper respiratory tract so when it is being affected to the pharynx so when the body's immune system will respond to it so when it will not respond then it will conversion into a rheumatic fever so first of all we'll see how it is so first of all the rheumatic fever will be affected when the immune system start targeting its own tissue so uh, first we'll see when the infection is in uh, pharynx so then the immune response will receive the signal so from immune response the i mean antibodies will send to the pharynx where it will overcome the infection so it is around 96 to 97 percentage so either the three percentage or it is four percentage where it is rheumatic fever so then we can remember when it is acting or targeting on its own tissue then it is rheumatic fever that is percentage around three to four percentage so if it is 96 to 97 percentage where it is been fighting with the infection but if it is reversed back to own tissue then the rheumatic fever occurs so first we'll see about the brain and it affects cardiac and it affects the joints and it also affects skin so this is the main phase where rheumatic fever occurs first we'll see about the brain affected with chorea is a movement disorder that causes involuntary irregular and predictable muscle movements so now we'll see about the second one that is cardiac we'll see that later so we'll see about the joint right now i'm drawing a joint or uh, we can go with final joint and in a uh, we can have a membrane so sinable membrane so now we are going with uh, because the immune response has targeted on its own tissues now the problem on the joints so we are seeing in sinable joint where it is swollen and uh, it is arthritis where they will having a pain at the same time they will have a swelling on um, joint at the same time they will have a tender on the joint so arthritis will be found in this particular uh, phase so next we have a uh, arthralgia so where they will have only pain in that particular aspect so if they have a multi joint pains then it is called as a polyarthritis so they have a pain and swell and tender in many joints so that will happen in this phase when the immune response will target on its own tissue so now we'll go with a skin where you will have a half moon red patches or circle patches or you will have a full patches so where on the skin and subcutaneous so this phase it is called as a erythmia and magnetum so in this it will be redness of the skin or mucous membrane involving pink rings on the torso and inner surface of the limb which comes and goes for as long as several months it founds primarily on the extensor surfaces so this phase it is called as a rheumatic fever when the immune response is not responding then it is acting on its own tissue then it is called as a rheumatic fever so now we'll see about the heart rheumatic heart disease so how it will occur so due to immune response and uh, directing uh, targeting on its own 
tissues now it has been affected so now we are seeing about this heart so before uh, going for this diagram i just want to tell you one by one we'll see the layers of heart how it has been affected so first of all you just remember the three layers affected so first we'll see about the outer layer of our heart uh, that is called as a pericardium so here uh, when it has been affected with rheumatic heart disease then it has been affected with rheumatic pericarditis so the rheumatic pericarditis is swelling and irritation of the thin sac like membrane surrounding the heart so pericarditis may be caused by viral infection due to fibrinous pericarditis the pericardium rub and pain you can see in diagram the fibrinous is like spiky in our outer layer of our heart that is pericardium so where you have a sharp chest pains so when they have a fibrinous pericarditis at the same time when they have a pericardial rub so then the pain will occur and at the same time they will feel of a short chest pain so this is called as a rheumatic pericarditis so this is the thing which we have to remember in this particular phase of the layer so next we will see about the myocardium so first of all what is myocarditis so the myocarditis is inflammation of the middle layer of the heart valve and myocarditis is usually caused by infection and if it is severe and case it can weaken the heart which can lead to heart failure so abnormal heartbeat and sudden death may occur so that is the center layer where we are seeing about so first of all we will see about what the things which occurs in myocarditis so here in myocarditis ash of bodies or microscopic structure seen in patients with rheumatic fever so differentially diagnosis and rheumatic fever so in medicine ash of bodies are nodules found in the hearts of individual with rheumatic fever which may result in inflammation in the heart muscles so it will characteristics of a rheumatic heart disease so now i am showing you in a diagram of the ash of body so where you have a macrophages or where it will have a multi nucleated cells so now we have to remember about this myocardial ash of body so that is multi nucleated cells and inflammation in heart cells that is the thing which we have to remember about and one thing we have to remember here is anti scarf cells so which is a pathological cells or often cells associated with rheumatic heart disease so anti scarf cells are enlarged and macrophages found within the granulomas associated with the disease due to this the middle layer that is myocardium will become a loose and fertile where it can pump the blood so where it will not use for the pumping action of the heart so when there is weakness in the muscle of the myocardium so that is a rheumatic myocarditis next layer that is inner layer that is called as a endocarditis so now i am drawing in our diagram so that is endocardium so here the problem is endocarditis so that is called as a rheumatic endocarditis so it is an infection of the heart inner lining so usually involving the heart valves so endocarditis usually occurs when germs from elsewhere in the body traverse through the blood and attach to the damaged area of the heart so people with damaged or artificial heart valves or other heart condition are most at risk so here we can see about this rheumatic endocarditis so where the valves so when it is closing and opening so where the fibrinous at the same time platelets will be in mass the vegetation occurs so the vegetation is the mass of platelets and fibrin and the micro colonies of microorganisms so which will inflammation of the cells and so at the edge of the valves of heart there will be fibrin and platelets will be in mass and it will be attached to each other at the edge so there will be less opening or less functioning in the valve so that is called as a pdg f platelets derived growth factors so that is about the vegetations which is 
been in the valves so that is the thing which we have to remember about so next we'll see about the metal so regurgitation so in this condition the heart metal wall doesn't close tightly allowing blood to flow back into your heart so if the metal valve regurgitation is significant so blood can't move through your heart so the rest of your body or efficiently making you feel tired and breathless so next iota regurgitation so where the aortic valve will not close properly due to vegetations of platelets at the same time fibrin and mass so they will not have closure of the valves so there will be backflow of the blood into ventricles so next we'll see about the tricuspid regurgitation so there will not be closure of proper closure of the tricuspid valve so there will be re backflow of the same place so now i'm showing you about the rheumatic pericarditis at the same time rheumatic so myocarditis and rheumatic so endocarditis this three if the patient have this three layers affected then the the condition is called as a pancarditis so this is about the rheumatic heart disease so overall rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease which is by the growth of the beta streptococcal so due to infection so when there is immune response is not proper and if it is not proper it is uh, acting on its own tissue then this is about the rheumatic fever so thank you friends for watching this video rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease thank you for watching this video it's star science robinson thank you it's star science